Jason got close there at the end. How did you assess the whole waiting for the team? Yeah, I just said to the boys, I felt we leant back. To use a boxing analogy, we tried to fight off the ropes. I don't think we stepped into the fight enough. Um, and we, we've got to be better. Do you feel like that alternatively also came with a lot more punch today? Yeah, well, they lost their first game, so obviously their motivation's higher. And, you know, motivation was good coming here, but it's all well and good having that motivation. When you get out in the field, you've got to step in. And there were moments where we did, but, you know, we were on the back foot before we started to step in and in both halves, um, particularly the start of the second half. I felt like we were unlucky right on half time and then we needed to step in to start that half. And I felt like if we could have scored first in the second half, we could probably go on with it. But to give away an early try in the second half just made it too hard. What was the talk out there at half time? Just after half time, Cam, and you were still in it, but um, yeah, I thought we were pretty positive to be honest. Um, we kept our heads up and eyes in and uh, we, re we reassessed and we talked about what we needed to do better and how to recoup uh, for the remainder of, of the half. So um, yeah, I think in the past we probably dropped our heads there and um, probably, I don't know, gave up a little bit, but uh, I'm pretty proud of how we were able to regroup there towards the end and uh, keep fighting all the way to the last whistle. Jody, what happened at half time with the trail of those claims that were actually abused? Well, it's not a claim. It happened. It's not the first time we've come here as a club and our players have been racially abused. Like, where does it end? It's just not on. You know, I shouldn't have to be able to come here as a coach and lead a team of players in here to be racially abused. It's not what our, part, our game's about. And we have to stamp it out completely. NRL clubs, I have to get rid of it. I'm, I'm life bans. Anyone wants to make racial abuse, and get, get them out of the game. We don't want their support. It's got to end. How's the trail? Well, he's, he's sick of it. Like, why, why wouldn't he be? Well, he should be able to come here as a star of our game and not be racially abused. Who cares what colour he is? It's just not on. I don't understand how that happens in our, in our day and age. I, just can't, I can't get my head around how a young kid thinks that that's a, a, the language to be using. Care what jersey he's wearing, you know. Get him out of our game. What's this? What's the process that you understand right now around this? Well, from what I understand, the security have done a great job identifying who it is. That the club's done a great job identifying who it is, and now we'll take it through the police. And uh, we'll, we'll go all the way as far as we can with it. Um, as a club, we'll stand right behind Latrell, and it's just not on. I just, uh, as far as I'm concerned, we go as far as we can take it. This is still going on. Not just a guy like Latrell, but anyone in society. Yeah, I think Coach summed, summed it up pretty good there. It's just, um, it's just not on. So it's disappointing that Latrell has to deal with it still. So um, yeah, I'm sure the club and the appropriate people will be, um, will be dealing with it. And um, yeah, hopefully, um, it doesn't happen again. Jaden, what's it say about Latrell's character that he can come out and have the second half that he did, even after something like that happens? Latrell answers his critics with his character every week. He, he just continually shows the quality person that he is. You know, and then again, you know, it's just... It, this is not something that Latrell just cops on the footy field. This is something that he's had to deal with his whole life. All the Indigenous people do. Like, it's just... I just don't... I can't get my head around it, to be honest. I don't understand how in Australia anyone's raised like that. It makes no sense to me whatsoever. Latrell's a real role model in our game. Um, we love him at our club. He stands for the Indigenous people, but he stands for good people. Um, and, you know, he, he'll handle it and we'll handle it and we'll support him as a club. Um, but he shouldn't have to handle it. He shouldn't have to keep dealing with this. It's just rubbish. Joe, you're closer to the patient Do you get worried stuff like this will eventually drive the trolley out of the game prematurely? Oh, I, I, I don't know. I, I just get worried about... Latrell or any Indigenous player in our, in our organisation, like, where as a game do we say, no, no, it's not happening? Like, it's just, it just has, there has to be hard and fast rules. If anyone even comes close to being racial, they are completely ruled out of our game. And if it's a young kid, rule his parents out as well. It's just not on. Like, I just start, why, why should you have to cop it? I mean, I, I, I can't understand how, he's cop, how he feels. I haven't had to grow up with this stuff, but he has. And as, as have other people that are, that are in his shoes, and it's just, I, I, I can't get my head around it. 
it was my child, I'd be absolutely ashamed and embarrassed that my child has, has even thought to speak like that. As far as I know, it was a young 15-year-old. But I, I don't quote me on that in terms of I'm not pointing the finger at exactly who it is. But I'm, from what I understand and what I've been told, it's um, a 15-year-old. So, more oh, like I said, as a parent, um, I'd be mortified if one of my kids spoke like that. Thanks, guys.